Well, howdy everyone, it's me again with another camera lens review, and this time I'm looking at the very interesting Canon 15 to 85mm f3.5 to 5.6 IS USM lens. This lens is the improved and much more expensive version of Canon 17 to 85mm IS USM lens, which I reviewed a couple of months ago, and it's also considered to be an excellent upgrade to the Canon kits lens. It's an EFS lens, so it won't work on Canon's expensive full-frame digital or 35mm film cameras. A standout feature of this lens is its impressive zoom range of 15 to 85mm. Now, I know you can get super zoom lenses which go to 250-270mm at the telephoto end, but they have comparatively poor image quality and none of them go as wide as 15mm, which is something I really like about this lens, as I personally love wide angle photography. You might think the difference between 18mm and 15mm doesn't sound like much, but it certainly is. Check out the difference here between 18 and 15mm. Surprising, right? 15mm is a very wide angle, which is helpful for all kinds of situations, which makes this a useful lens for travelling. And 85mm is quite capable on a telephoto end as well. The focal range of this lens is very nice indeed. And what's also very nice is the build quality of this lens. I'm testing it on my 18 megapixel Canon 60D, but here it is mounted on a Canon 50D, where it balances very nicely on the bigger camera body. The lens is a little big and heavy, but it feels very solid. It's made of high quality plastics, and the design looks very modern. The zoom ring is very smooth indeed, which is useful for video making, as you can see here. The focus ring is quite narrow, but it runs smoothly, which is nice for video making. The lens features full-time manual focusing, so even if it's set to autofocus, you can grab the focus ring anytime to make changes, which is a really nice feature. The lens uses Canon's excellent USM autofocus motor. It's very fast and silent, as you can hear here. The lens's tested autofocus accuracy was also excellent. As I mentioned before, the lens has an excellent zoom range, but the drawback to this is that it has a narrow maximum aperture, which means it doesn't let in much light. f3.5 to 5.6 really isn't very impressive at all, and it means you have to use slower shutter speeds, which could mean blurry pictures. However, to counteract this, the lens has excellent image stabilization. Here's some video at 85mm with stabilization off, and now with it turned on. As you can see, the footage is kept very still. As you can see in this footage, the image stabilization is very well behaved as you pan around, giving a very smooth movement. This is probably the best image stabilization I have ever used. Even at 85mm you can get sharp pictures with the shutter open for a quarter of a second, which would normally look like this. Basically, everything about the way this lens is built is just about perfect. It's a joy to use. Now let's look at the image quality, starting at that very wide angle of 15mm. As you can see, the image is extremely sharp in the middle, but a little soft as we look in the corners. There's also strong chromatic aberration on contrasting edges, which is easily noticeable in most pictures. This can be gotten rid of in editing, but it's still a weak performance. These problems only improve a little as we stop down to f5.6 and f8. But finally at f11, the picture quality is much better in the corners, and of course it remains excellent in the middle of the image. So at 15mm things are generally quite good, until you look in the corners. Now let's zoom in a little to 24mm. With the aperture wide open at f4, we can see that sharpness and contrast remain excellent in the middle of the image, and the corners are also very good. The chromatic aberration has nearly all cleared up, and there's only a slight drop in sharpness. Things look about the same at f5.6, and stopping down to f8 yields excellent sharpness in the corners, and the middle of the image still looks fantastic. Let's zoom in again to 55mm. Everything is still razor sharp in the middle of the image, and once again the corners turn in a very solid performance. 
stop all the way down to F8 and F11 for even sharper corners. This really is a great performance and much sharper than Canon's kit lens, which I reviewed about a month ago. Finally, let's zoom all the way in to 85mm. Even with the aperture wide open at f5.6, there are no prizes for guessing that again, the lens is extremely sharp in the middle. As we look over in the corners, the lens's performance is slouching a little, looking a little soft, with strong chromatic aberration appearing again, as you can see in the windows. However, stop the lens down to f8, and there's a dramatic increase in sharpness which becomes excellent, although the chromatic aberration remains. The quality in the middle remains superb. So overall, except for a couple of slip-ups at the extreme focal lengths, this lens is very sharp indeed, especially considering its long zoom range, and that's the most important thing. You can always use editing software to get rid of chromatic aberrations, as well as other image quality problems, but nothing can replace sharpness, and that's where this lens really shines. A very good performance. Let's have a look at some other image quality issues. As you can see here, the lens suffers from quite dark corners when used at 15mm. If you turn on peripheral illumination on your camera, then this vignetting is largely reduced. Perhaps more noticeable is the very strong barrel distortion, as you can see in the bending lines in this picture. I personally hate barrel distortion, and it's pretty strong here, but I'm not exactly surprised to see it on a lens of this type with such an ambitious zoom range. The good news is that you only need to zoom in to 18mm for it to go away, with it turning into only slight pincushion distortion at 50mm. Except for the problem at 15mm, the distortion on this lens is actually pretty well controlled. As you can see in this footage, the lens handles bright lights about as well as its older brother, the Canon 17-85mm lens. There's a little flare, but it's not too bad, and only when you're shooting directly at the sun, which is a slightly moronic thing to do anyway. This lens isn't great for macro photography, as you can't get very close to your subjects. But the image quality remains extremely sharp as you get close, as you can see here, which is definitely commendable. This lens really isn't much good for getting an out-of-focus background. The narrow maximum aperture of f3.5 to 5.6 means that you just can't get that narrow depth of field for portrait shots or for really creative photography, which is a real shame. When you can get the background out of focus, the quality of the bokeh, or background blur, is actually very nice and smooth, even at 15mm as you can see here. So that's at least one thing. So overall, this is a camera lens with many great strengths, and only a few flaws. It's very sharp, and the colours and contrast and, well pretty much everything else about the image quality is just great. The 15 to 85mm zoom range gives you more or less everything you need, and the build quality and autofocus and image stabilisation are all top quality. Compared to its older brother, the Canon 17-85mm lens, which I reviewed a couple of months ago, it is simply better in every single way, although it's also more expensive. The major downside of this lens is its narrow maximum aperture. It really isn't letting in any more light than your typical kit lens, so you're not going to get fast shutter speed, or more importantly to me, a narrow depth of field for portrait shots or creative work. But it's just not that kind of lens. I think it'll appeal most to people who want some kind of super zoom lens to travel around with, or just one lens that can do everything, but who don't want to sacrifice image quality. The Canon 15-85mm is the closest thing you'll get to a super zoom lens while retaining excellent image quality. If I had to go travelling with just one camera lens, this would definitely be the one. Highly recommended.